The next expansion for Lotro, the update 38 Corsairs of Umbar is only a few weeks away and I thought I would make a video where I give some tips of what you can do before the update to prepare, the day before the update and also some handy tips once the update is live. As always if you like the video please drop a like and subscribe to the channel and let's get into the tips. The very first tip will be to complete the epic book one on all your characters. So for the brand new epic story, the song of waves and wind, book one is already out. Before this update, it came with the update 36 with the Western Kings Gondor release. So you can actually already do book one to be prepared going into book two as soon as the expansion releases. So in order to do this, I would advise you to go to Southbree, to the Stable Master, and simply head to Minas Tirith Midsummer. This will take you to Anorian after battle, and once you get here, you can find the quest pretty easily. Just dismount when you get to Minas Tirith, and once everything loads in, you have Glindor, King Elisar's herald. He will have the chapter 1.1. A king should see his kingdom. So this is where you start the new epic. Go to Minas Tirith Midsummer. Talk to Glendor and just start doing the quests. Completed chapter 1 takes about an hour or so of playtime if you just focus on doing it, doing all the quests. So in about an hour or so you should be finished with the chapter 1 of this uh, epic questline. Eventually after doing all the quests in book 1, you will end up in Imloth Melue and this is where the chapter 1 ends. And this is where after the expansion that chapter 2 will pick up. So I would certainly recommend doing this at least on your main, whichever class you're planning on questing on, like doing all the quests. And of course, if you're planning on doing the books, the epics on your alts, you should probably do it on them as well. The next tip will be pretty straightforward. It will be clearing out all the level 140 cap stuff from your bags and your vaults. A lot of people might have stuff saved up. Of course, the hope and scrolls and whatever are fine to keep and all the food. You can still use the food and hope and scrolls after the level cap increases. Nice to have while questing for some extra small buffs. But especially things like crafting items. Any crafting items from this tier is usually stuff you won't need anymore. So I would just recommend putting them up for auction to sell and make some gold. Because I'm sure a lot of people are gonna want this stuff to level up their crafters for Umbar. So just in general, I would be looking at cleaning out your bags. It's a fresh X-Pack. You want to have some room in there for the new items to keep those new items. I still have my Gundabad task items. Those are probably items you can get rid of as well. And instead, you'll have some room to save new task items for the new zones. I would also recommend spending all the leftover enhancement runes you have. There's not really any point saving them right now. With the new X-Pack, obviously we're going to get new enhancement runes for level 141. There's not really any point holding them out. I would just use them on your main characters, get your traceries as high as possible before the new update. That's just a general tip to clear out your bags, make sure everything is in order, and clear out your vaults of any unneeded stuff, so you'll be set for the next expansion. The next tip was already going to be a tip in my video, but... After this forum post by Orion, it's for sure going to be really important for you to do. So he talks about deactivating the Forester event, but we really care about the second new. We have some unwanted news about the Umbar crafting. They intended, like we heard before, to have Umbar be a separate tier. Like you didn't have to max out all the tiers beforehand. But unfortunately, the coding in the game, how crafting has been coded, made this change impossible. So instead, the Umbar tier will be just like any other classic tier, where you have to complete the previous proficiency to access the Umbar craft tier. Of course, this is not something they wanted to, but they were simply unable to make this change because of the coding. And that leads me into my tip for the crafting. Obviously, the tip is going to be to max out your Gundabad crafting, so you're all set for the Umbar. One good thing about the crafting is that we are going to get the selectable professions. You can change whatever you want on your professions. But if you're someone who is a bit behind on the crafting, you still have a couple of weeks. I would suggest getting to work, 
getting your crafting maxed out. I still have some work left on my metalsmith and some other characters. So if you have multiple characters, I would advise to try to cover all the crafts among all your characters. Obviously, if you're like me with the prospector maxed out, you would definitely keep it. You will definitely max out your metalsmith. But of course, the tailor. I've done nothing on the tailor. I've crafted one thing. So of course, you're not going to spend all this time leveling your tailor for no reason. I would rather wait for the update and then you can select something else that you want instead of tailor. And then think about leveling that at that point. But I would definitely recommend maxing out your crafting. Especially the professions that you're pretty close to maxing out. Make sure you max out the Gundabad here. Do all the predecessors. All the way from Apprentice. Work your way up. Complete the Gundabad so you're ready for the Umbari tier when the expansion releases. Another thing that might be worth doing before the expansion goes live. Will be maxing out your Ancient Script. And also your Embers to get a head start on getting new stuff. Typically, when there's a new level cap and expansion, we get an increase in the Ember Gear. And a lot of the times, the Ember Gear is actually pretty good early on in the expansion. So it could be nice to have some Embers to get a head start on getting some of the Ember Gear. And on the same note, it might be nice having the Ancient Script to buy some new Traceries from the Tracery Archive of Rivendell. Because it might be worthwhile upgrading some of your Traceries early on. So this is something that's absolutely not needed, but it would just be nice to be close to capping out script and embers before the next expansion. Another thing you could consider doing is simply maxing out your virtues. I know not everyone is really that fond of the virtue system, but it's something you can do while you're waiting for the new expansion, knocking out some deeds or doing some weeklies to get some more virtue XP and maxing out your virtues. I'm pretty confident we're going to get a virtue increase, probably from 86 to 88 initially, and then to 90 down the line. But I'm pretty sure we're going to see an increase to the virtues. So that is something you could consider, getting them as high as possible before the next expansion. Another thing you could potentially do before the update is maxing out your legendary items reward track. Now I'm actually not quite sure what will happen if the update comes out in about two weeks. Still have another two weeks left on the reward track. I'm wondering if they would skip to season 8 and start fresh. Because you would definitely get an advantage if you would wait by claiming your uh, reward track stuff. Like enhancement runes. I wonder if these would turn into Umbari. If these traceries will turn out to Umbari. It might be worthwhile holding off claiming your rewards. Like I'm actually not sure what's going to happen with the reward track. But for me, who already maxed it out for this season, I am at 100. I have 22 extra boxes. And one thing I would definitely do is wait to claim your extra boxes until the release of the X-Pack. Because there's always a chance that there might be some nice Umbari stuff that you can get from these boxes. So basically, my advice for the reward track would be that if you have unclaimed prizes in your track, don't claim them, wait for the update before you claim them and see what you get. Same thing goes for people who have maxed it out and you have a lot of boxes left over. Do not claim these yet, wait for the update and then claim them to hopefully get some nice Umbari rewards. Another thing you can start considering doing is collecting some task items for Gundabad. So as we know, doing tasks will actually give you experience. So if you gather some task items like I have on my Guardian, then when the expansion goes live and you can finally level up from level 140, you can get a nice head start by turning in some tasks as the first thing you do. So gathering some task items that you have on your characters to turn in every day could be a nice way to get a head start on your leveling. So it's definitely something I would recommend people doing, gathering task items on your characters to turn in tasks or some early boost to your leveling XP. Another thing that I would recommend, since it's an expansion where we get a level cap increase, is to get some Tomes of Extraordinary Experiences. If you're someone who likes to level up a bit faster while doing your quests, or if you plan on doing some power leveling, stacking up on some Tomes of Extraordinary Experience or Exceptional Experience will help you with your leveling. The same thing can be said for Reputation Accelerator Scrolls. 
at least for sure on the tunes you're planning on questing on. Like your main tunes should have the accelerated XP running to get your faction reputation up faster and getting the new recipes, new items, whatever is going to be locked behind the new factions sooner. I would definitely recommend at least having the uh, reputation accelerators on your main character. For example, me on my guardian will probably be one of the ones I quest on first. So I would then make sure I have some bonus running while questing in the new zones. And I would also try to keep an eye on this for if I run out to put some more tomes active to have that bonus reputation for the brand new factions. So rep accelerators and possibly tomes of extraordinary XP for your characters when you're leveling and earning a reputation with the new factions. So what are some things you can do on the day before the expansion? So I would always recommend the day before the expansion to clear up your quest log. Do you have any quests here taking up space that you don't really need? It's always nice clearing out your quest log before a new expansion with so many new quests. So I would definitely look at clearing out any old quests, like I have some from Enidwaith for some reason, probably for Reputation. And also the weeklies for level 140, such as the Gundabad weeklies, giving you embers and uh, virtue XP, etc. These will probably be changed into modes of enchantments. So definitely the Gundabad weeklies will change from embers to modes. If these quests keep the virtue XP, it might be nice to hold on to them just for that in case you run this at some point. But just in general, I would pretty much remove all the quests from this level cap as you won't really be playing on this level cap. Some weeklies, such as the mission weeklies, should remain with embers. They're probably going to be more important than right now because early on in the expansion, there aren't that many uh, ways to earn embers. So the mission weeklies should remain active for embers. They might reset to uh, zero because they usually do that with the uh, big changes to level caps or weeklies. There's always a chance that the mission weeklies might reset. So if you're close to completing a mission weekly, I would recommend completing it before the expansion. The same thing obviously goes for the delving weeklies. Delving will also be another source of embers. So with the new expansion, the delving weeklies and the mission weeklies might be worthwhile keeping and probably doing as well, especially early on in the expansion. This next tip is going to be something as simple as where do you log out the day before the expansion? So obviously it doesn't really matter where you log out, but if you want to make things a bit easier for yourself, I would recommend either parking your characters next to the tasks bulletin boards in Gundabad if you're planning on doing the tasks for the extra experience. The other option in my opinion is to go to Lusernak in King's Gondor to Imloth Mila and park your character right next to where the book 2 of the epic starts. Obviously you can also put your milestones on these locations, but if you want to make your life a little bit easier on release day, I would park your character next to where the epic book 2 begins or buy a task board for the extra experience. Another thing you can do the day before the expansion is throwing out your portents. As you can see, the portents have a maximum level of 140, so I guess there's not really any point keeping these for any character you're planning to level, so might as well throw them out the day before. So what about the day the expansion actually arrives? So me, as someone who has every class and a lot of alts that I plan on leveling up, one thing that I'm planning on doing on every character that I have, but probably not on the ones that I'm going to quest on, I'm probably going to quest on my Guardian first or my Mariner, I haven't decided yet. But on any other character, what I'm going to do is simply log into that character. Let's say I log into my Warden, if I want to play my Warden for a bit in the beginning. I'm going to log on to my Warden, I'm going to pop an XP Tome 100%. This will last for one hour and I'll just log out because I don't want to wear out the tome. But I'll pop this XP tome, get 100% from quests. Then I'm going to go into my destiny points. I'm going to get the accelerated experience. Obviously I can't get that now because I'm uh, at level cap. But once we get a new level cap, if you have a lot of destiny points like I do, 
I would recommend just every day make sure you apply your accelerated experience. So just apply this accelerated experience, get your tome running, and then just simply turn in tasks every day. The next day when tasks reset, do it again. This way you'll get a lot of, let's call it free XP on every character. So a pretty nice way of getting some leveling done on your alts that you're not going to be playing in the beginning. So obviously you would probably not do this for your mains, the, the characters you're planning on questing, but this is a great method for your alts to get some free experience. Another thing that's going to be pretty useful, especially on your main characters, the characters you're planning on questing on, is to make sure you have some reputation tomes running. So if you look at your reputation, once you pop a reputation tome, you'll have bonus rep and what this means is that if you get 1000 uh, reputation from a faction you're then gonna get 2000 because of your bonus rep so for new content new factions it's pretty nice having uh, some small reputation acceleration tomes i think a lot of people should have uh, some of these if you don't then what can i say unlucky but definitely if you do have some tomes in your vaults or saved somewhere, then make sure you have accelerated XP running on your character while questing and doing everything in the new zones. And of course, if you're someone who wants to quest a bit faster, you can always use extraordinary experience tomes to make your leveling up a bit faster. Another thing you need to remember while playing the new expansion at level 141 and level 146 you'll be able to reforge your legendary items and the legendary item range for the next level cap should be 500 to 549 if they follow the same pattern as the previous LIs meaning that at the beginning of the tracery cap we should be at level 515 on the item level so just remember to reforge at level 141 and 146 another thing to keep in mind is that the traceries that we have right now, let's use an example of, let's use the force taunt duration as an example for the guardian. So this uh, is the gold Gundabad tracery. The enhancement limit is level 499. So once we get the new level cap and the limit on our traceries go to 515 and then later on beyond, these Gundabad traceries will not be able to be leveled up past the enhancement limit 499. So whatever block rating I get from 499 is the max I can get on the Gundabad one. If I upgrade to an Umbari tracery, the Umbari Force Taunt Duration, obviously my stat will go higher than the Gundabad one. But of course, if I go for a purple Umbari, I will lose some of my Force Taunt Duration bonus because it will be a lower quality. So the question becomes when we're hunting for the new Umbari traceries, do we replace our traceries with purple ones just for the stat gain? Obviously for the force conturation you don't really care that much about the block, but if you're playing a DPS class and the stat is like crit rating or mastery, it could matter. But for the most part, I think you need to look at every single tracery and decide if you are willing to lower the quality of your main bonus or the extra stats, or if you think the main bonus is too important, so you'd rather keep hold on to your Force Taunt duration. One pretty good example of this would be the Brutal Assault Damage Tracery on a Red Guardian. The Gold Tracery that I have gives you 38.5% Brutal Assault Damage, and I believe the Purple Tracery has like 35% damage. So the trade-off would then be if I upgrade to the Umbari Tracery, I will be able to level my Tracery slot to 515. So if I were to replace this with, let's say, a purple Umbari Tracery, that would mean that I would lose some of my percentage on my Brutal Assault damage, probably like 35%. I'm not sure what the purple one is exactly, but in essence, you would sacrifice some Brutal Assault damage percentage or improved stats. Let's speculate that maybe your mastery, instead of being 2000, if you upgrade it to an Umbari purple, you can probably take it to like 4000 or so, 4 or 5000, who knows? I'm not really sure what the stats are going to look like, but you're definitely going to see an increase on the secondary stat bonus if you can take it past 500 and all the way to the 515 mark. 
So my advice for your legendary items would be, of course, Reforge at level 141 and 146. But when it comes to replacing your traceries, just keep in mind, is it worth for me to drop some main bonus, like the damage over time? Like if I were to get a purple uh, damage over time to drop for my Guardian, I would not replace the damage over time just for the stats. I would rather keep the extra 2% damage over time instead of taking it down to 20% just for the increase of a few thousand mastery rating stats. So like I said, reforged at 141 and 146. And when it comes to upgrading your traceries from Gundabad to Umbari, remember that these traceries will still work at level 150, giving you the strong bonus. And I would recommend you considering each tracery on its own if you want to replace or not. For example, the Heroic Precision I would probably replace because you can take the crit rating bonus higher. So always when you're replacing a tracery, keep in mind, do you want to nerf the main bonus for extra stats? Or do you prefer keeping the main bonus high in favor of a bit lower stats? That's going to be up to each person to decide if they want to get the upgrade for the stats or keep the old tracery for the stronger bonus. In most cases, I would say you probably keep the Gundaba tracery until you can get an Umbari gold tracery to replace, or in some cases, getting a teal tracery, taking a small downgrade for improved stats. The next tip might be pretty obvious. But of course, new expansion means new crafting materials and new items to get. And if you're out questing, make sure you harvest whatever you can get. Any scarn you find, any hides you get from killing animals, any wood you can find, anything you can gather pretty much. You should make sure that you save and keep. Because always in a new expansion, the crafting materials are pretty high demand. Especially now with the crafting revamp, the crafting is probably going to be even more wanted, the crafting materials. So obviously, you would probably want to keep them for yourself to level your own Umbari crafting. But also, if you want to make some good money, you can put your crafting materials on the AH. Just make sure when you're questing, save all the new items. Everything that's from a new tier of crafting it will be valuable. So just make sure you save all the crafting materials. Crafting materials will always have the green background, such as these items. So anything with green background, you should make sure that you save and then use for your crafting or to sell to other people for their crafting. And obviously, you do want to start working on your own crafting, the Umbari tier, because crafting should be viable throughout the level cap, as we've been promised with the crafting rework. So make sure to save the items you collect during your travels in the new zones and also work on your own crafting and possibly also the new crafting guild of Umbar. Some other things to take note of while you're leveling up. Obviously our set bonuses on our gear are not going to be working once we get past a certain level. For example, the Hidden Horde gear that has set bonuses has a max level of 144. So once you go past 144, your class will change somewhat. Your set bonuses will no longer work. Same thing goes for the Guatanos uh, jewelry gear. And the same thing can be said for the class essences in your gear. Once you get to level 150, these class essences will be useless. So once you get to that point, you can safely remove these uh, essences as they will do nothing for your class. Your class items will also stop working. For example, the gold bows from Sagroth, it has a max level of 149. So hopefully you get a bow during the questing. Or in any case, I would probably craft a backup bow just to be safe. The other classes will also be hit by this. For example, the hunter class item, the book, has a max level of 144. So some of these class items do have a lower maximum level. So I would also recommend getting like a crafted Gundabad book as a backup. Obviously there's going to be new items with the Umbari tier, but they might be level 150. So it would probably be a good idea to have a backup tome, a normal crafted Gundabad hunter book. And the same thing will go for every class who has a class item from Sagroth. These do have a maximum level. 
So at some point, they will not be working for you anymore. If you enjoyed the video, please consider dropping a like and subscribing as it really helps out the channel. And if you like Lotro, I would really recommend joining my Discord servers. You can also support me directly through my Ko-fi website. If you're playing or looking to play Lord of the Rings online, there is one place you need to be. The Guiniverse is a Discord server created for the community of the players of Lord of the Rings Online. The server is getting close to 7,000 members, and in this server you'll find tons of helpful information. There's monthly giveaways, easy access to patch notes, you can keep up with my YouTube videos, my streams. If you're a streamer, you can ask for the streamer role and you can announce your streams in the other stream channel. There are discussion channels for pretty much everything, every class, monster players, but the best thing about your server is probably the gearing resources tab where you can find anything from trait lines for every class every build there are stat goals where you can find out what stats you should aim for on your characters really helpful information about the drop rates from instances as well as screenshot from all the new loot that appears in the game if you enjoy lotro you should definitely consider joining this server and hopefully i'll see you in middle earth if you were part of the Guiniverse already, you might have noticed that another tab appeared at the top, the LFF server. This server is a brand new server that I created, the LFF Guiniverse. In this server, you can select which servers you want to keep up with. And once you select your server, say you select Arkenstone, you will see the LFF, the kinship advertisement, looking for kinship and trade channels. And there's also voice channels if people want to use those. The LFF channel is basically a looking for fellowship channel where people can post if they need players for the runs. And this way, people don't have to be logged into the game to see the chat. They can just instead get a notification on their Discord. There's also a kinship advertisement page where kins can post their kinship advertisement and have people join their kins. And you can also post in the looking for kinship chat if you're looking for a kinship. But make sure to take a look in the kinship advertisement first and look through all the kin to find a suitable kin for you. There's also a trade channel if people want to buy or sell stuff that you can use. Hopefully you'll consider joining this server to bring the community even more together, not just in the game, but also outside of the game.